In this episode of Uptech Report, I interview Leo Patching, the CEO of Digits, a company that's making it faster, easier, and more secure for large and small SaaS companies to integrate payment systems into their websites. In our interview, Leo talks about the unlikely genesis of his company and some of the complex problems they're solving, such as controlling fraud at the checkout and how to make SaaS a more fluid experience. Thank you, Leo, so much for, for joining us. And I'm excited to learn more about Digits and how it started, the, the growth, the, and, and also how you're trying to stay innovative and continue to grow into the future. So starting off, uh, what year did it start? What year did you join? Yeah, um, so as we as we chatted about, um, so the company actually um, was formed in uh, 2014. Um, and the kind of core team who started the company really did it um, around a whiteboard. Um, so it was uh, a bunch of friends, Laura Wagner, who's, who's the kind of principal founder, kind of initial CEO. David, who's who to this day is our chairman, who was the first CFO of PayPal. Um, Linda Perry, who was kind of head of acquiring of Visa for a while, and Ed, who was at Apple Pay, and a bunch of other people. Um, but kind of that was the core team who really came around a whiteboard and with a deep experience of the fintech space, payments, um, and generally like a, a solid kind of background, looked at what problems they could solve in the payment space, what they could do to create something innovative, and that's where Digits was born. Um, and I, I knew a couple of the board members and uh, connected with you know, Laura and David at the point they were looking to augment the team uh, with the CEO. And so that's when I came in to kind of help lead the company alongside Laura. So you're joined 2017 going forward. Obviously, there's been an evolution. But right now, what is your focus, your industry that you're focused on, kind of market segment that you're looking to help? Yeah, so we kind of we talk of ourselves as, as, a, as a fintech kind of infrastructure company. Um, the uh, kind of specific area of fintech we operate in is payments. Um, and so um, kind of at the at this stage, we are um, very much an API driven solution kind of servicing um, SaaS platforms and marketplaces. And the pain point that, that you solve for then these SaaS platforms uh, is what? Yeah, um, so with our initial solution, the core focus has been around user experience. Um, so the user experience of payments within a platform or within a SaaS company and how they actually provide um, a good experience for, for their customers. And so they use us as an infrastructure behind them to, uh, to help uh, enable that process. I, I like actually on your site, you says, think of it a way to almost baking it in into the, their actual platform itself. So when I, when I always think of payment processing, I think of you know, PayPal or Stripe, uh, which is Stripe a, a competitor? Um, Stripe is a is a trailblazer in our space and has done some amazing work um, and helps to kind of Stripe's doing a fantastic job of helping people reimagine what payments can be. So um, we we are very different, um, but uh, I, I would love to be uh, kind of be mentioned alongside those guys. I think they're doing amazing work. Um, but yeah, gotcha. So, but the real kind of a uh, key point that you hone in on is uh, white labeling. Like your your name isn't actually necessarily need to be seen by the end uh, consumer that yeah. gets the payment process. Is that correct? Absolutely. Yeah. So we, we've done everything from um, from creating our, our kind of REST APIs to allow um, user experience to be within the platform um, to embeddable reporting, to drop in checkouts, to everything to make sure that we are truly the infrastructure behind um, and we enable what's already happening on the front end um, just in a more clunky way. Gotcha. Okay. Well, how many customers do you guys currently have? So we had a, uh, an initial set of kind of launch customers um, that we went to, went to market with when we were testing out our, our product. We had, I think we launched with five kind of initial platforms. I mean, I've expanded that this year to 10 um, and we were in the process of scaling with that. Um, we have a number of others in the pipeline and different. We've gone at the market to look at it in terms of kind of from the data sets we get and the kind of intelligence we can gather. We've gone at different different platforms in different verticals. So we are, we're not true, like fully agnostic, but we are fairly um, kind of able to be broad in the way that we can enable payments for 
a ticketing company and a dealer management software and have the same, the same APIs service those companies because essentially the end functionality they're looking for is the same. The front end is the different part. Gotcha. So since it's baking it in, uh, it's really any uh, online uh, SaaS solution that wants payments to receive payments, they could potentially be using your service. Absolutely. Yeah. Now, as far as pricing and plans, what does that look like there if you're accepting more customers? Yeah, for sure. So we, we very much, and this was another key part of the, the kind of genesis of the product, was to make this a simple, transparent, easy to go kind of approach. And so we work as a partnership with the platforms we work with. So we actually, our kind of goal, rather than almost a, a pricing kind of uh, straight platform play, is to help them monetize payments within their environment to align both of ourselves and our technologies. And we are essentially, in, in the way that most technology products are working, we are moving to, we've kind of gone with a usage-based um, pricing. So there's no, there's no kind of minimum flat fees, platform fees, whatever else was in the legacy kind of payments world that you got charged for and you weren't sure what it was. Um, it is purely a um, kind of bake into our technology, kind of utilize functionality. And we then, like most FinTech companies, kind of make our money on the back end at, tra- at the point of transaction. Gotcha. The partnerships or rather what you've established here is you've made all the connections needed on the, the back end of finalizing the payments. Yeah. Um, what, what kind of partnerships does that look like what, that you have that have kind of then simplified then for SaaS developers don't have to worry about it? Yeah. So we, we've kind of worked with a number of financial institutions and we've, we've got integrations that are live with, um, a larger kind of FDIC insured kind of payments processor on the back end of us. So we, we utilize what they already had as legacy systems and have helped, helped them make this more of a um, seamless process for integrating with today's kind of web 2.0 companies. So the bridge between kind of the old and, and what the new really want. Yeah. And I, I, I joke with you when we spoke last time, the, uh, and one of Laura's favorite um, metaphors is the rocket ship um, of, kind of SaaS companies, somebody who's built their own product and is, is going to market with it, and the kind of horse and buggy that's connected to it that is the, the legacy financial institutions. That's a, a nice bridge that you, you guys can make that hopefully SaaS developers can, or, or, or entrepreneurs can not be held down <laughs> by exactly. the uh, old financial industry. Now, for you personally, like, and, 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 and your organization, how are you guys innovating? Because obviously the technology and things are changing. Um, what, what are you doing to stay innovative? Yeah, for sure. What, I mean, one of my benefits um, for myself personally is I'm surrounded by a, uh, a fairly kind of extensive team of people who are constantly thinking, uh, Laura, one of our other um, team members, Ben, is on the forefront of a lot of this stuff. And so um, as we build out our product, we are... Um, one of the kind of nice things of going live with customers who already have their own customer sets is that we're solving real problems in real time and adapting to the way that the market's shifting. And so um, one of our core focuses on this last kind of year has been building out our checkout product, um, driven by the, the nature that we see opportunities to integrate um, intelligence and um, fraud controls at the point of the checkout and, and have things that we can enable seamlessly at that side. Um, so it's, it's interesting to have this um, real-time innovation because it is a, when we actually see these things, oftentimes they are an actual need and they are fairly rapidly needed and it's solving those problems, but also future-proofing them. And this is the thing Ben, our CTO, is kind of incredible at is getting something that we can deliver now, but building it in a scalable fashion where we can go in the future. Um, and as we've talked about that, we, we've created some interim solutions that do pattern recognition and um, enable us to kind of take the data we have or take the parameters that we're kind of driven through our APIs and then build on that, but doing it all the time with our database elements, looking to kind of be able to use those in models as we go forwards in the kind of AI ML space. That's really, obviously with the data just going through, you, there's so much that you can do with it. Um, and so the, 
opportunities are there, but you're taking it one step at a time, obviously, as you grow. And it's smart that you, you have your five or, or how many, 10 you said right now, um, customers that you're able to work with. And the great thing is, you know, the pain points that they need as you work with them. So you can build it in, um, as you grow for you. Um, uh, how, are there any places you look for um, to stay relevant on um, new technologies or are, are there any technologies that you're interested in right now? Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, always benefit from industry events and uh, podcasts. Um, Do you have a favorite podcast that you listen to? Um, I actually have a very good friend who's, who's a podcast called Jordan Harbinger. His show, the, the Jordan Harbinger show, he's amazing. has fantastic guests and... Um, yeah, I, I have to give him a shout out. But yeah, um, so, somewhat technology focused. He's here in the Bay Area, um, has a kind of has a broad set of guests. Gotcha. Um, do, yeah. do you, how about books? Do you have any books here or audio books you're listening to? Yeah, I knew you were going to ask me that question. Um, I, I actually just got into a debate last night with a friend. Uh, I, I recently read Sapiens, um, hmm. uh, No Harari. And it's, uh, yeah, I mean, it, it, it talks about the, the kind of the, the, the journey from kind of homo, homo neanderthal, what, all the types, and I actually didn't know there were different variants really until I read the book, to, um, to how sapiens became the predominant species. Um, and then the end part, kind of which links into the technology element, is um, as the predominant species and as the most kind of capable, kind of developed species we've had, we are doing a fantastic job of uh, destroying the planet too. And doing the, so it talks about how, how technology, automation, AI, um, goes into some of the UBI conversations, but that does a fantastic job of that. So that, that was a, a recent book I read and it's fascinating. Interesting. And it is interesting where hopefully we can use the technology to help us do better, not make things worse. Absolutely. Uh, where do you see um, uh, digits in, in five years from now? Yeah, so it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating um, kind of approach because the landscape is moving quickly. Um, although there is still a long way to go, I think, um, as, as commerce and e-commerce and kind of SaaS continues to develop and change. Um, we, we've been kind of very mindful on creating ourselves in a, in, a, in a position where we have a core offering that we can build upon, iterate, and provide different services to different use cases. So we, we have our underwrite kind of, uh, infrastructure play that we have our core APIs built on, and then we kind of, we're delivering some front end functionality. And we're looking to kind of branch out with our partnership base to continue to solve problems as we go. So I, I, I see us being kind of continually innovative and continually delivering kind of new, new ways to solve problems in the payments and FinTech space. Do you have any desires or hopes? Do you want to be in like a thousand SaaS companies, a million, you know, on your platform? Any, any desires for goals or numbers for that? Yeah. So growth for growth sake is, is kind of something I'm, I'm always wary of. Um, I would rather do gr good growth, profitable growth. Um, I, I see us I mean, the potential for where we get to. Um, a lot of what we're doing is to kind of reduce the friction even further from where we're at to engage with us. So kind of the current integration is reasonably frictionless, but we can always do better. So as we get there um, and our support model grows with that, uh, there's no there's no reason why we can't scale to a large customer base. There's also, we have a one-to-many strategy. So uh, the platforms we work with, we scale with their customer base too. So it's, it's very you much. Yeah, you don't necessarily need a million customers for it to be working well for you guys. If you just had 10 that are processing a lot of payments, you're good. Exactly. Exactly. Not that you won't take more. Of, of course, of course. And uh, yeah, I mean, but we, we don't always look at it purely as the direct play to the platforms. We've also been um, working on, we've, we've done a licensing agreement to license the framework of our technology um, oh. to a different geography. We, we are kind of core focuses on North America. Um, our, our kind of best uh, solution is US and Canada based. Um, we, we, we worked with a company that had presence over in Korea. And so rather than try and solve a localization problem, we licensed our framework. We provided them with uh, a way to implement our solution in their environment. And they actually had their own team that they used to localize. It. So we see that as, a, as another growth opportunity and a way to actually allow people to build derivative works on top of what we've got. 
um, which we don't claim to have all the answers. Um, and so we always love having people engage in that sense. Now that's cool, the ability to then license. I never think about the fact that every country, obviously the payment processing would be different on how the banks are regulated and, and, and work. But it's, so you're focused on North America and then now licensed in, uh, uh, where did you say, South Korea? Correct, yeah, South Korea. Um, now, for this future of making things even more seamless and continuing to iterate, what kind of hurdles do you see that you need to overcome uh, in order to realize this vision? Yeah, so um, we are tethered to the banking system. Um, and so one, what, it's, it's actually a very healthy, robust conversation between technology and the industry, but the legacy payments industry playing catch up. And so being able to use different elements that are now available, um, different wallets, the way, different ways people can approach um, providing financial services, being able to provide that based on legacy systems is a hurdle we have. Um, and something we are always cognizant of is that we can do whatever we want. We can build everything our own way, but we have to work with the ecosystem in order to make it actually work for the broader populace. Um, I mean, we, we have, again, kind of part of our kind of brain trust. We have a lot of people who look at blockchain and um, different, different ways we can kind of expand our offerings in that area. And we, we are fairly rigid and um, kind of focused on making sure we deliver our core offering whilst kind of having very strong opinions and very strong focus, but loosely held because we do see things changing. Right. Um, but you, you kind of, the Gretzky thing, you skate to where the puck is, uh, is going to be, but um, you've also got to make sure you, you kind of, you're on the ice at, at the same time. Right. And then you keep paying the way forward. Speaking of blockchain, I noticed on your site, um, Ben, he serves as the CEO of digits.io, which is a blockchain. So uh, subsidiary. So tell me more about like, you're obviously developing another piece that will help going forward. What does that look like? Yes, yeah, so it's separate. Um, we had enough kind of, uh, demand and interest around the time to uh, look at <clears throat> how we could um, actually utilize blockchain or, or where the future of, of that technology is going. Um, and uh, Ben is, uh, kind of, he, he doesn't always love the term, but kind of more of a futurist kind of has that um, approach and, and has a deep experience in crypto, has been involved for a long time and kind of um, worked in the industry. And so we, we launched that as a, as a separate company, um, more as an R&D arm to make sure that we were uh, staying, staying up to date and staying relevant and also being able to um, kind of move as and when things became available. Got it. That makes sense that you, you've got your arm to be ready for whatever that future may hold. Exactly. Yeah. And it's, um, that market is rapidly changing, rapidly uh, innovating, but also um, first movers in that space have, uh, have faced quite a lot of pain. So it's making sure we, we stay current, stay, stay uh, kind of consistent with making sure we're in the space, but without compromising. Without the pain. Exactly. <laughs> well, limiting the pain. You can take small bets and go down some blind alleys, but... If you take it all the time, you, you get yourself in trouble. Have you seen a company using AI, machine learning, or other technology to transform the way we live, work, and do business? Go to uptechreport.com and let us know.